on OKHQ. And today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to configure and prepare API calls in Postman and then import them into Bubble, into the API connector, and then use these API calls in your Bubble application. So this is a bit more of an advanced tutorial. Um, if you want to use external APIs or even your own backend APIs from Bubble, um, it is highly advised that you use some kind of external tool. Um, probably the most popular one is Postman, which you can download for free. And it's a great tool to test out API calls. And then there's an easy way to import these API calls directly into your Bubble application after you tested them and then use them within your application. And what we're going to do, we're actually going to create um, or, or, or open an API endpoint from our Bubble application using backend workflows. We will then test out using um, this API endpoint in Postman. Once we configure, we'll import it back into Bubble. Um, just, um, just to show you the full cycle of how to create an API, how to call the API, and how to use the API in your Bubble application. So everything regarding API. So the first thing, let's jump right into it. What you need is Bubble, a Bubble application, and Postman. Um, and I'm going to head over, once I'm in my application here, I'm going to head over to uh, settings and we won't actually need any page here. There will be no designing in this tutorial. I'm going to head over to API. I'm going to say, okay, I want to enable workflow API and backend workflows. Okay. And you can already see we have this endpoint here enabled, which always has a similar structure. So this will be the endpoint we'll make API calls to, but more of that um, in a second. So let's now go here to our menu and you will now see this new menu called backend workflows. Okay, so let's take a look at that. And currently we have no backend workflow. Let's create a simple workflow. Okay, so let's create um, a new API workflow here. All right. And this workflow will have a name, it will be called um, trigger. Okay, you can call whatever you want, but this will also be included in the API workflow name. All right. And this should be as exposed as a public API workflow. Why? Because we want to um, we want to run it from an external source. Okay, so we want to maybe you want to use this API endpoint from another application, and then you will have to check this box. Okay, um, we will also check ignore privacy rules when running this workflow, but we won't check this here because we want to have authentication. Okay, and now for example, let's say we want to add a parameter. So what are parameters? Parameters are basically information, pieces of information that you give when you make an API call. So in our case, let's, for example, say we want to trigger an API call within our bubble application. And when this is triggered, we want to create a new data thing in our database. And we also want to send an email. Okay. And if we go ahead to our database here, we can see, all right, we have this thing called listing, which consists of um, or let's actually use test here and test just consists of a text. Okay. Um, and we, that's what we want to do. We want to create a new tech, uh, test data type, whatever this is. Okay. So how are we going to do that? Well, we want to, we have to receive this field here, which is text, whatever that means. Um, and we have to provide that when we make an API call to the bubble application. So as a key, we're going to call this, this is going to be the, um, the text, okay, which we're going to provide as a parameter. And the type will be of type text, okay, because that's also the type we have here, type text, okay. Let's actually rename this. I think that's a bit confusing. Let's call that um, name or something like this, okay. So wanna, for this data type, let's actually rename this as well. Um, let's call this product, okay. So we want to create a new product and we want to provide the name of the product, okay. So what we want to provide is the name, okay. And then what we also want to provide, we want to provide another parameter, which is going to be the email, okay. And the email will also be of type text. This will be the email of the admin, for example, okay. Doesn't really matter right now, but let's just stay with it as it is, okay. So these are the two pieces of information we are going to provide when we make the API call, okay. So then everything is as usual. You can just go ahead here and say, all right, I want to create a new thing when this is triggered. The new thing I want to create is product. And the name of the product should be really simple, the name. Okay. And you can see we have these two parameters that we defined here. They are now available as our first two variables here. And we just can select them. So the name will be whatever we provide as the name. That's it. 
and then we want to send an email so let's say we want to send an email to our email field okay sender name i don't know let's call it mocha hq and the subject is new product created okay and the body will con uh, consist of hi admin a new product was created here is the info and then we can say all right so what is the info the info is the product's name and then also the id of product we can have that id of product will be result of step one's create a new product unique id okay this is always automatically uh, created okay so really really simple um obviously you could do much more in this workflow but that's not the point of it we actually want to show you how everything works in postman so let's switch over to postman and this is how the um postman tool looks we have this um this overview here where we can define all parameters authorization um, and, and enter the request url and then test our request and it's a quite nice tool uh, as i mentioned already you can define parameters here you can define authorization get put headers there provide a body data and so on and then test requests and see the code for all in all different languages for this request and this is going to be really uh, helpful later okay so let's test that now let's go ahead and say all right we want to trigger this api workflow so yeah what if the question is now obviously what is the endpoint and the endpoint will consist of this workflow api root url which you will find here in settings so we're going to copy that go back to postman and pa paste that here and obviously we have to append because we have to show what workflow is it so we're going to add a slash and then the workflow name which in our case is called trigger so simply i'm going to add here trigger okay and it's going to be a post request um step one done now step two we have to authorize if we just send let's try that let's send the request we'll get the response here which will say um something like let's wait a second unauthorized okay you must authenticate to call this met method which obviously makes sense because you don't want anyone to just trigger your endpoints okay you want to authorize yourself so what i'm going to do i'm going to click on headers here and we're going to add a new um, key value pair and this is just something that has is, is unique to the to the way bubble handles api calls you just have to memorize that that's always the same so the key will be authorization okay and the value will be bearer and then you add a space you go back to bubble you go to settings api and you generate a new api token okay you can call whatever you like i'm just going to call it test and then you want to copy this private key all right go back to postman and add that after the bearer and now we should be good to go so let's try that now again let's click send okay and we don't have the uh, error anymore not authorized now we have the error missing parameter okay um, which is also true we we didn't provide any parameters so what parameters do, do we have well we had the parameters name and email okay so let's also add these so all you have to do is you go back to postman you go here to the parameters section first of all we want to add name okay or actually this is wrong sorry we're going to take a look at it in a second it's not query parameters you want to go to body you want to add form data and the form data will be our name and our email okay let's just double check that name and email both of type text okay and the value will be um, i don't know product a and the email will be the admin email which in this case is info at nocohq.com okay so let's try this now great as you can see there's a status success which means the api call was successful we can double check that by going back to bubble under data app data um, all products and we have our product here which is called product a created just now via our api let's just delete all of them and let's show you again so we have no products here now okay and I'm also just getting the email here right now just to show you hi admin a new product was created here's the info product a and the id of the product so really really straightforward works nicely okay one small thing I want to show you is if what for, for every reason um, if for any reason you you can't or don't want to add data as form data you can also add it as a parameter in the url request this is usually not as safe but it's also an option and this is what we did here before so under parameters you can also add it here and you can say all right okay the name should be product a and here the email should be again info at nocohq.com 
And as you can see, this will be appended to the URL itself as information. Okay. Now, if you run the request, it won't work. Why? Because we have to make one small change. We have to go here to our API workflow. We have to say, all right, the parameters are added as query string, which means they're as a string in the URL. If we enable these two, then it will work. If we try it now again, should be a success again. Let's wait a second. Yep, it's a success again. We can go to our database, take a look. Yep, we have product A again. Um, and if we go to Postman, actually, it's just, just to show you, I'm going to uncheck this now and we're going to run the Postman request again and it shouldn't work. Yeah, it says missing data because it doesn't recognize this. So let's just delete that again and add the body here data. That's better. All right. So, um, once you're done configuring your API calls in Postman, um, whatever all this um, consists of, you can go ahead and simply click on this code icon here and define the, the coding language in which you want to export this, um, this API call. And we're also always going to use C URL. And now all you have to do is simply copy the C URL code, head back to Bubble and go to Plugins. And you will have to add a plugin, and in this case, it's going to be called uh, be our API connector, which will allow you to make API calls. Okay, it's by Bubble. Install that, and now we have the option here of adding API call. So let's add another API. We're going to call this API. Um, let's call it Test API. Okay, um, and we have our first API call here. Okay, we can take a look at that. Let's actually delete that. And instead of configuring it ourselves, we want to find a small text here which says import another call from C URL. I'm going to open this. I'm going to paste the code I just copied and I'm going to press import. Amazing. So all we configured in Postman is now automatically integrated here into our bubble API call. Okay. The only thing that doesn't work here right now is the body. Okay. Um, we can change that to form data and add that ourselves, but the rest worked quite fine. So let's go ahead and modify this a bit more. So we have the name of our API call. You want to maybe name that and want to create, uh, call it create a new product. Okay. Okay. So how do we want to use this? Do we want to use it as data? Do we want to get call this to get some data or we want to use it as an action to do something? Well, we want to use it as an action. Okay. We want to make a post request to this endpoint. All right. The header is set via Postman. And the only thing that wasn't taken over was the form data. So let's add that ourselves. Body type is form data. We want to add two parameters. Parameter one is name. Parameter two is email. Okay. These should not be private. These should be set by us. And now what you can do, you can just simply again add the information here. So let's call that product B and again email. And then you have to run this API call once. Click on initialize call. Wait a second. And great. We just have a status success returned. We want to save that and we are good to go. So the question now is, okay, we have integrated this API call, which we test in Postman. And now you can simply go ahead and use this in your workflows within your bubble application. Obviously, just to keep in mind, this doesn't really make sense. What we're doing here is we're making we're calling our own API of our own application. Obviously, we could just create a new product via normal workflows, but that's not the point of this tutorial. The point is to show you how to configure API calls in Postman and then import them in your bubble application. This could also be an um, API call to any external services to, I don't know, Microsoft, to Facebook, whatever it is. And once you configured it, you can then use it in your bubble application. So how? Well, you simply let's create a new page here. Um, all you have to do now is let's, for example, say you want to have um, a button. Okay. And it's going to be called submit and let's go ahead and say, all right, start at a workflow when this is pressed, what we want to do, you want to head over to plugins. Okay. And under plugins, you should have the test API, create a new product action. And here's going to call you for the authorization. This is going to stay the same. And then you have the, uh, the option for the parameters, which you can also use dynamic data. So what you can do, for example, you can say, all right, 
I want to have an input here and this input should say enter product name. Okay, let's center that. And then when this is pressed, I want to put that here, input enter products name value. And then the email, let's, let's keep that hard coded. There's actually a mistake here like this. All right, so let's preview that again. Okay, and let's also simultaneously open our database here. So under all products, we have product A, product B. And now let's create product C from our bubble application. So I'm going to enter here product C. I'm going to click on submit. Okay, nothing happened. So let's see if it worked. Yep, it worked. Product C is created just now in our database. And I'm also just receiving the email here right now. So everything works perfectly fine. And um, yeah, we created our own uh, API endpoint from Bubble. We then imported it or and tested it into Postman. Once we were done in Postman, we then exported the code and put it back into Bubble into our API connector to make these calls from our Bubble application. And that's how you use APIs. Um, again, a very simple API. There are much more complicated APIs, obviously. Um, but yeah, I think that's a, a good and important start into APIs for Bubble. So thank you for watching. And I want to see you guys for the next tutorial of NoCoHQ. Bye.